Abundant energy in harmony with nature. Solar energy. All you need is glass. By Larry Hartweg, Zedmaster at ZeroEnergyDesign.com. Sunlight can make your car 160 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. That's hot enough to crack the plastic dashboard. Glass allows light in, but it traps heat. The scientific principle is called the greenhouse effect. We live in a world where business as usual thinking causes the vast majority to completely ignore obvious trends. Therefore, we are forced to be totally frank and blunt. Burning expensive, non-renewable, highly polluting fossil fuels to heat buildings is spectacularly stupid. We must stop subsidizing this stupidity and encourage the use of free, clean, abundantly available solar energy. Sunlight through any window can heat up a room. This is a good thing in the winter, but a bad thing in the summer. We can design to allow solar gain in the winter and block it in the summer. Poorly designed windows on most modern buildings can cause more bad heat transfer on winter nights and summer days than the good solar gain that they allow in on sunny winter days. Thermal modeling is important to solar energy design. The simple solution is called isolated solar gain through a greenhouse, solarium, sunroom, or conservatory. This creates a thermal buffer zone between interior and exterior glass. In essence, there's one window on the outside of the solarium and an additional window between the solarium and the interior living quarters that maintain comfortable temperatures. The sunroom is located on the equator side of the house. In the northern hemisphere, the equator side faces south. In the southern hemisphere, the equator side faces north. We maximize glass on the equator side and interior views through the sunroom to the outside, which allows in abundant daylight. We minimize glass on the other sides of the house. The solarium should not be an afterthought. It can be integrated into a very low-cost, near-zero energy home. We've known how to do this since the President Carter Administration 1978 solar energy tax credits. All it takes is well-designed glass. This 1982 Zero Energy Design home was demonstrated inside the huge National Energy Expositions nearly three decades ago. This 1980 Zero Energy Design New England Salt Box home uses a two-century-old shape for very good thermal reasons. The south side is high to allow abundant sunlight into the solarium. The north side is lower to block cold winter wind. We design solar space heating and cooling techniques into the envelope of the building itself. These photographs of actual homes show sun space creativity in both single and two-story homes. There are many different options for large and small solariums. They provide sweeping panoramic views and abundant daylight to all rooms in the house. Very low-cost greenhouses can be constructed on the equator side of the home that just have a dirt floor that's useful for any type of planting. The year-round conditions in the solarium are often tropical. Many people choose to put a hot tub, swim spa, or even swimming pool in their solarium. The solar heated water contributes to the thermal mass and the performance of the home. Thermal buffer zone solarium glass design is critical. In cold climates, we want to maximize interior solar gain in the winter. In the summer, we want to eliminate all direct solar gain. This requires the designer to understand the annual path of the sun. In the winter, the sun is low. In the summer, it's 47 degrees higher. This is a latitude-based design parameter used for overhangs. Solarium heat exhaust vent controls are also provided. The solarium glass on the outside should be higher than the interior glass to allow the low winter sun to penetrate into northern rooms. 
In the summer, when the sun is higher, no direct sunlight enters the solarium at any point in time during the day. Optional, movable shading devices can further provide precise control for daily temperature requirement variations. Window quilts can be used to conserve heat on winter nights. One of the important design factors that novice passive solar designers have not yet fully understood is how to equalize the temperature between the sunny south side solarium and the cold north side of the house. This can be solved without fans, electricity, or thermostats of any kind. It involves designing in a natural convection airflow path. Warm air rises like a hot air balloon in the solarium, and then cooler air falls on the north side through rooms like storage space, laundry rooms, etc. This creates a circular airflow path that continuously transfers heat from the south side to the north side while the sun is shining. It is a self-regulating automatic temperature balance system. The crowning achievement of zero energy design is cooling with sunshine in hot, humid climates in the summer. Large roof vents are open and all airflow is upward. The thermal buffer zone is maintained cooler than outside air. The ambient temperature of the earth is used to cool and dehumidify fresh air intake at the base of the building. One of the extremely important passive solar energy design concepts is that we must never use roof angle glass or skylights in any climate. It is bad every single day of the year. In the summer, roof angle glass creates a solar furnace. It also has uncontrolled harsh glare. In the winter, warm air rises like a hot air balloon and there is major heat loss at night through the glass. Roof angle glass eventually leaks and hail breaks it. It is always bad. It also is an insurance risk. The U.S. Department of Energy says that roof angle glass and skylights should be avoided. Free, clean, abundant solar energy can be used to heat and cool buildings and to provide all the electricity that we will ever need. There are a thousand specific details in order to provide abundant energy in harmony with nature. We discuss them on ZeroEnergyDesign.com and PassiveSolarEnergy.info. Please see our other narrated videos on YouTube under the topic of Zero Energy Design.